fetching water in the desert. Before 500 AD, humans hadn't yet arrived in southeastern Arizona, but the climate was similar to today. In the late summer, sudden monsoon thunderstorms caused flooding in normally dry stream channels. This flood water soaked into the ground in a process called infiltration. Eventually, it traveled down to the water table and was stored in a process called recharge. This stored groundwater is what we use today for drinking and irrigation. If you were to graph that flood in the stream channel, it would look a little bit like this, with a sudden peak and then a more gradual decrease in flow rate as the channel dried up. This is important because recharge happens mostly in these stream channels, so understanding how the stream channels work will help us assure our water supply. Between 500 and 1100 AD, humans arrived on the scene. The Hohokam, Mogollon, and Trincheras cultures understood the importance of stream channels and built small brush dams to slow and spread floodwaters. We think that the effect of these brush dams was to spread out the flood peak and allow more contact time between the flood water and the stream bed sediment and therefore more infiltration. In the late 1800s, ranchers arrived on the scene, at first with a few head of cattle and then with many. Overgrazing caused erosion and damage to the stream systems. Many stream channels were deepened and widened. As a result, when monsoon floods occurred, they came through very quickly, causing even more erosion but leaving less time for that flood water to soak in as infiltration. If you were to graph that, you would see a change from the pre-human activity graph to a much sharper, shorter peak with less contact time and therefore, we think, less infiltration. Today, ranchers are working with conservation groups and researchers to try to restore these stream channels. They're building structures called gabions, wire baskets filled with rocks, and stocking cattle at more sustainable rates. The gabions are similar to brush dams. They're intended to slow and spread flood water. So if you were to graph that, it would look like this. Before humans, and then after overgrazing and erosion, you had a sharp peak, and then after the gabions, the peak is more spread out, and there's more time for infiltration. Research has shown that gabions do increase the amount of vegetation and greenery around stream channels, but we don't know for sure if they actually increase the amount of infiltration. That's what we're working on finding out. 